Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Welcome to the Fly With Us podcast. This podcast is bringing the art of conversation, self-love, self-care, mental health care and protection, life lessons, love lessons, and everything in between. Today, we're going to talk about making something better. I'm your girl, Lady Bounce. And I am Picket Vince. Today's Mindfulness Minute is called Invent Something. Do your creative juices start to flow whenever you see something new? Do you immediately have an idea of making it even more functional or efficient? Do you enjoy figuring out how things work or coming up with an inventive ways to doing things better? You may have a creative spark that all inventors share. Just tinkering around with your product ideas, sketching out drawings, making notes, or even giving your product an original name can be bring happiness. Improve upon existing products or develop a totally new one. Find a niche in the marketplace, a product that is needed but doesn't yet exist. Who knows? You might have the idea of the next big invention everyone will be glamoring for. Word up. Word up. So what are you going to invent? Uh, What I'm going to invent is a new style and era of music. Okay. How are you going to do that? Well, you know, like a week or so ago, I got this idea from Kuda Mac. Um, he had asked me to sleep on it. He was like, how would you describe our sound? Oh. I was like, oh, I don't know. Because we got a lot of different stuff. You know what I mean? So yeah. I came up with this idea that I'm going to let people, hopefully people have heard the new project. If you haven't heard it yet, you should have been done heard it. Um, been, done but heard I'm, it. been done heard it. I'm going to okay. let people listen to that album and then go back and listen to a flight from Chicago. And then I'm going to ask people how they would describe it. Mm-hmm. Hey, can you turn down the music just a little bit? Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm yelling over it. That's good. That's good. Okay, um, gotcha. Yeah, so um, that's that's one thing. I'm going to ask people how to uh, how they would describe the music. And also, I'm, I've set up a, a study format for myself to just increase increase my abilities all over. Uh, I'm going to do it just like if I was in school. I'm going to have classes for myself on different subjects that I want to work on every day to, you know, just increase my my creativity, you know, and by reinventing myself, by learning more, you know, spiritually, physically, financially, and health-wise. And then I know by doing that, it's going to influence the music. Mm. Okay. So what you going to invent? Um, the baby. <laughs> I'm going to invent the baby that just stays the baby and doesn't that, turn into a teenager. <laughs> that, that, that would be amazing. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Uh, but no, I get on a serious, serious note. Um, well, it's always been a dream of mine to rewrite the curriculums that we use in school. So as I'm getting more um, more training, more professional development hours under my belt, I'm starting to put myself in these circles with these people who are doing what what it is that I ultimately want to do. Mm-hmm. So I'm already, you know, taking the steps and making the moves to make the curriculums that we teach in school better. And I know like there's been a lot of talk, you know, the last few months about critical race theory. So not necessarily teaching that in the way that everybody thinks that it that it's gonna be taught. That people have this fear when you say critical race theory, like oh, it's saying that all white people are bad, and and if you're not black, then you're an oppressor, and that's really not what critical race theory is about. So I've never even heard it described as that before. I mean, I've heard people wanting to get rid of it. I think that uh, we just live in a a country that doesn't want people to really remember the truth of things. Right. And, and for, for the people who don't want us to remember or don't want us to be told the truth, that's the way that they spew it. 
when when they're talking to to other people about why they don't want critical race theory they actually have it all wrong their thought process is that we're you know we're going to teach you know teach kids that all white people are bad and they're oppressors and to hate you know hate them or not hate them it's not even about that and so that's why it needs to be it needs to be written in a way that everybody feels comfortable but also written in a way where the truth is is known and the truth is taught the right way and when taught the right way it's really just an acknowledgement that the systems that we have in place have not always been kind to people of color and people who are not of color have benefited from these systems so rather than attack a race let's attack the system that was put in place and then fight to change the system now i do realize that in changing the system that is going to make a lot of people who have benefited from the system uncomfortable i can't do anything about you know that part and, and i wouldn't even try to that's not my mission you know as they say that's that's not in my wheelhouse that's not in my ability to control so with that being said not just critical race theory you know being taught or like the true history being taught but we really do need to teach kids about finances and financial literacy and there's this common misconception because there's this meme that keeps floating around facebook and other social media talking about things that should have taught you in school how to do taxes how to do insurance how to manage your money but people who post that meme don't realize that personal finance and financial literacy has been a part of the graduation requirement in ohio for at least the last 12 years now back when we were in school we were taught those things automatically as part of our home ec class i was taught it um in home ec in middle school i was taught it in high school as part of um home ec and as part of my division when i went to patterson at first i was in marketing and then when i transferred and ended up going to ctc i took retail management and marketing so finances and taxes was was a part of my curriculum the whole time i was in i was in school so these people who were like oh they didn't teach us that in school i'm like well, what school did you go to and what school system because the school system i went to which at the time was day in public we were taught that stuff maybe you was talking that day or maybe you just skipped school that day but we were taught it so maybe um when it comes to teaching it now it needs to be more hands-on or maybe it needs to be more concrete for our students because while we do teach it and it is a graduation requirement i am finding that students are passing the class but then they still don't really have a good grasp or a good handle on money and money management so we really need to teach it more explicitly mm. I, I think if we teach it more explicitly, the kids will be more interested and they'll grasp the concepts a lot better. Okay. What what other things would you um, rewrite in education? Because I hear people complain about the education system all the time. Well, I would definitely... I would get rid of some of the math courses that we teach. I think what we what we need to do is kind of what they do in Finland and in Norway. They find out what the kids are interested in for a career and all of their courses in school are tied into that career. So for example, if you don't plan to be a math teacher or a mathematician, you really don't use algebra a lot in your day-to-day -day life. You don't use a lot of geometry unless you are a contractor or a carpenter so we need to be teaching kids math that goes along with what they want to do for a career goal so that it does it sticks better in that regard too i got kids who you know who, who have you know had to take like chemistry and then they had to take um algebra one and two and then geometry one and two and then they have to take a higher advanced math course well why are we giving these kids these courses just to say they took them 
when the kids are still not grasping the concepts and they're just passing the classes just barely like you could get a c and pass the class and still get credit for the class so you have kids you know passing these classes at the bare minimum mm -hmm. is that really helping them at all or would they be you know better serviced if we did teach them a class on taxes and insurance and life insurance or you know more ways more better ways to manage your money retail management you know retail math because retail math is something that they use when they go in a store and it says it's 15 percent off well how much is that off and while we do all have a calculator in our pocket you want to be able to do some of that stuff in your head if you're you know in the grocery store and you're looking at you know the 12 pack versus the 14 pack which is the better deal you know you got to be able to do those concepts really fast in your head well if we were explicitly teaching those kinds of math concepts in school kids would be able to do that a lot faster how many times have we gone somewhere and the cashier gave us back too much money or not enough money just because they're they're not good with managing money and even though it's right there on the screen how much money to give back if you can't count change back then those are just numbers on the screen we need to just be more concrete and more explicit in teaching the kids the things that they really really need to know in order to survive in this world for the mm -hmm. kids who go on to college of course when you go to college you only take classes that are in line with your major so you may not even have a math class depending on what your major is so if you don't learn these important concepts in middle school and in high school when do you end up learning them you and god forbid you have to learn it the hard way which is on the fly which of course is really not going to stick because you're trying to learn it in a hurry or do this concept really fast and then you got to pull out your phone you got to pull out the calculator because you can't do these mental math things that you should be able to do if you were taught more explicitly how to do it. Mm. And the same way, I know a lot of people um, cry and holler about cursive because we took cursive writing out of schools. And then people are like, well, nobody writes in cursive anymore. Nobody really writes anymore because we type everything. That's true. But then you have to be able to sign your name so cursive writing is not such a lost art that it should completely be you know scrapped or thrown to the wayside when i'm looking at at my students and i'm saying when they sign in in the morning for example to come to school they're scribbling their name or they're printing their name and i'm like no your signature is your name in cursive and they look at me like i've just cussed them out in german mm -hmm. So, you know, we just, we have to really explicitly teach the things that we really want kids to know so that they can be productive once they graduate, which is why we ended up having, you know, the OGTs and the proficiency tests and the end of course exams, because they're like, oh, well, these, these kids are going to school, but then they graduate and they still don't know anything. Well, why is that? Why do we have to have a test that says, yeah, you passed this test. That means you know all of this stuff you you are now able to graduate and if you don't pass these tests then you can't graduate but keeping a you know a kid in school till he's 22 23 24 25 because he didn't pass the test it's not very bright so if we were teaching more explicitly maybe we could do away with the need for having this end of course test to begin with yeah i agree I agree. I think one thing I noticed that happened when um, they started having all these different type of tests, because I graduated from high school right before they had all these tests. They didn't have all these tests. I think we tested it my senior year, but it didn't count for anything. And the next year is when they had all these different tests that they started going. And one thing I've noticed, you know, having our kids grow up in an era of all these tests is there's not enough time for regular instruction learning because they're trying to teach just what's going to be on the test. Yes. So you don't have time to develop social skills. Um, you Like you said, you don't have time for uh, everyday math that they will need. Like you said, retail math. 
Uh, they don't have they don't have gym in a lot of schools anymore, so they're not physically fit. Mm-hmm. And it's just that's one thing. Music programs are gone, which music helps develop your brain. Um, yes. And so, yeah, I think that uh, it may be time for a reboot. So you might have to start jotting down all your ideas for changing the education and write that. Even if you don't write it for a school, write it for a book and put it out there. <laughs> you have a new curriculum out on the street, and let's right. let's promote it to the hood. <laughs> Let's get that book written and push it in the hood. I you know, like you have to idea. have a, a, a you have to have a lot of learning outside of school. Yeah. I've learned more stuff since being in school, out since being out of school than I did in school. Mm-hmm. And it's stuff that I want to learn. It's not, you know, I, I like I hated reading in school because I don't give a crap about <laughs> old Yeller. I don't even have a dog, and I don't want a dog. <laughs> So, <laughs> you know what I mean, and and it's just it, I I found school to be very extremely boring. I was very interested in school because it wasn't uh, teaching to stuff that I felt like I needed to know or was just interested in. But when I got to college, that was different. I started picking up books that interest me. You know, books that weren't uh, available to me or I didn't have knowledge of when I was in school, especially in the school that I was system that I was in. Right. So I, I'm a big advocate of us writing books and pushing them in the hood so the kids could get these information that they're interested in early. You know? So yeah, yeah. That's uh, let's reinvent education by putting education back in, uh, putting education in the streets. I like it. Yeah, word yeah. up. And maybe we can we can change the narrative that it's cool to be stupid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> that's what we need to reinvent the black mind state. It's not cool to be stupid. Right. It's not cool to do stupid stuff. And right now we are living in a world where it's cool to be stupid. Yeah. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't I don't get it either. I I um I'm not giving up, you know, on our youth. I I can't see myself ever doing that. However, there are some days where I'm on the ropes, you know, and I'm just I'm tired because I'm tired of combating the programming like i seem like like there are days where i really feel like this programming that has taken over our mindset our music our tv our everything you know it's just it's too big a machine to fight against sometimes Mm -hmm. but again i'm not ready to quit i'm not gonna bow out but it is tiresome you know trying to fight this big machine and if you know, and there are times where I feel like I'm fighting this big machine by myself, but I know that there are other good educators out there, and I'm sure that they feel, you know, sometimes they they feel defeated, and sometimes they feel like, well, why am I doing this? Like it's torturous sometimes, which is why good teachers end up leaving the field, and we end up being stuck with these people who are just in it because it's something to do, or it's a steady paycheck. Oh, the summer, you know, you get your summers off and it, it's okay money. So yeah, I'll just do it. But people like that really need to get out the way. So people like me can do the work that needs to be done. Cause I'm really trying to do the work and, yeah, and, and in my way. And like you said, and you know, what's other people out there. I think it's about making those connections with other people that's out there. You know, we've had guests talk about education, uh, Michelle Person and David Archer, you know, really start building a relationship with those type of like minds and, you know, helping to really, you know, see if we can get things start rolling and changing. Right. You you, you mentioned Michelle Person. She's actually opening her own micro school, which is amazing. Yeah, that's dope. I'm putting all of my, my support, you know, behind her and hoping that she'll be able to expand. Cause right now it is just like 
preschool through, you know, first, second grade. So I'm hoping that it, it's a concept that really catches fire and she can expand and add grade levels because what she's doing in the field of education with her micro school is amazing. And if you, you want to find out more about uh, Michelle and her school, just look up Michelle Person. She's on um, Facebook. She's on TikTok. And the name of her company is Just Like Me. So definitely go, you know, find her books, find her TikToks. Her TikToks are amazingly informative. And that three minutes that you get on TikTok, you know, she makes me wish I had a small child just to put them in her school. But we don't have any small children anymore. No. But I want one just just to put them in in her school. I I don't I don't not even for that purpose no no not <laughs> at all <laughs> not at all. But uh, speaking of books too, um, like if we said before, the Gym City Get Down is coming back July 9th, and all proceeds will benefit the Polar Bear Book Swap which is doing what I said is uh, putting books in a hood. So if you would like to donate to that, you could just go to uh, Polar Bear Book Swap on Facebook, or you could come out to the get down and pay that $3 holla and all the money's going to go to there. You can also bring some books. If you'd like to donate some books, you should bring some books to the get down. I'm sure uh, Nicole would love to receive those books so she could put them in her free libraries all around the area of Northridge. Okay. Word up. And so where is the get down going to be? I know we haven't had one in three years and I'm so excited. Yes, yes. The get down is going to be at Blind Bob's in the Oregon District in Dayton, Ohio. The address is 430 East 5th Street. So uh, be sure to come out and support a very good calls and have fun. It's a party with a purpose. Can't beat that. Can't party beat that. With a purpose. Yeah, and so our... So our self-care assignment this week is going to be invent something new. And even if it's not something brand new, like the Mindfulness Minute said, make a, an existing thing better. Come up with a way to make an existing thing better. Invent or reinvent. That's the self-care assignment for this week. Now let's get into my favorite part of the show. Doom, 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 doom. Brain science, 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 science. All right, so we're talking about inventing something new or reinventing something. I'm going to give you some ways um, for how to do that because one of the ways that, that we need to, to think about things to reinvent something or to make something better is by daydreaming. You got to let that mind wander. We've had self-care assignments about that before, about giving your brain a break. Your brain has a lot of work to do, keeping your body just moving and breathing and flowing. So there are times where your brain just needs a break. So we're going to talk about the scientific benefits of letting your mind wander. So daydreaming, it seems fair to say, has a bad reputation. People have blamed it for being ruinous costly self-destructive and dangerous sigmund freud which we are all familiar with often called daydreamers infantile and neurotic 20th century 20th century textbooks said daydreamers were headed for psychosis wow psychosis mm. really no there are actually three important types of daydreaming let's get into it the first type which some would be considered um harmful is easy distractibility and difficulty concentrating. This approach is a sign of poor attentional control. Wow, wait a minute. <laughs> so it's basically saying if you're just letting your mind wander and you're not trying to be creative or productive, then that type of daydreaming is dangerous because your brain, while it's getting a break, you're not producing anything at the end of it. So the second type of daydreaming is called guilty dysphoric daydreaming. And it's associated with unpleasant emotions, such as anxiety and guilt, fear of failure and obsessive, hostile and aggressive fantasies about others. So that's when you let your emotions take over your daydreaming. We wanna be cautious about that because sometimes those emotions can lead us in directions to make phone calls or to make comments about 
things in that moment that we really don't feel. So you want to be careful with that type of daydreaming. The third type of daydreaming is associated with more openness, imagination, and a sense of adventure and exploration. This type of daydreaming is called positive constructive daydreaming. We want more of that because it has robust positive outcomes associated with happiness and creativity and fortunately for us humans the third type of daydreaming is the most common so based on the studies here are three reasons to engage in positive daydreaming one you'll be better at planning daydreamers are better planners well the reason future planning is so important is that it stimulates parts of the brain associated with anticipation, which increases your self-worth and allows you to be more constructive. This propensity to stimulate the, to simulate the future rather than a dwell on the past is consistent with the viewpoint that the most obvious benefits of spontaneous thought emerge when people look forward rather than backwards. Two. You will be more creative. This is what we're talking about. Inventing, reinventing, making something better. Daydreamers are more creative. <clears throat> Excuse me. When we are involved in completing an under, in undemanding task, our minds wander to try to solve a demanding problem we haven't yet cracked. As we're vacuuming, for example, we're spending our unused brain power working what paint color we might want to put on the walls or new windows in general i like that so letting your mind wander in that regard is very good engaging in an undemanding task during the incubation period also will lead to substantial improvements in performance on previously encountered problems number three you'll have deeper relationships with others Daydreamers are better friends. Did you know that? Mm. Here, we make better friends. And I'm going to tell you why. Constructive internal reflection improves a wide range of socio-emotional skills, including compassion, empathy, simulating the perspective of others, and deriving meaning from social encounters. All of us, especially children, find ourselves in social situations that we can't entirely explain. We can use daydreaming to work through those problems, forcing children in particular to focus exclusively on what they call high attention demands may hamper a child's ability to be socially adaptive. The costs of daydreaming are often public and visible, but the benefits are often private and hidden. As important as concentration is, it is not the only skill we need. We also need time within our busy days to process the painful and confusing parts of our relationships that require the types of creativity and future planning that daydreaming improves. The moral of the story, our minds know what's good for us. So instead of pigeonhole, pigeonholing a wandering mind as the lazy mind, we should see it as a much more adaptable one. So to be a daydream believer, means to have bigger dreams sweet i like it i love it don't 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 use that daydreaming to do the self-care assignment invent something or reinvent something word up word you know up. you can as always you can find us anywhere you find your favorite podcast and once again Gym City Get Down July 9th at Blind Bob's in the Oregon District. And don't forget to come check out Lady Bounce every third Friday at the Barrel House spinning bangers. 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 <laughs> That's our show. Thank you for flying with us. It's your boy Picket Fence. I'm your girl, Lady Bounce. You already we know are. you can find us wherever you find your favorite podcast. You can always email us at flywithusla at gmail.com. You got a show idea, want to be a guest on the show, got a new product or a new book you want to promote, hit us up and come on the show. Let's talk about it. Word up. Word up. We out of here. Peace. Peace. Peace.